Hi, let me tell you straight away that uh, this video relates specifically to fixing a problem with the tuning dial of an R1155 radio. So if you haven't got one of these with a Dickey uh, tuning mechanism, look away now. If you have got one, then hopefully uh, the information here will be like holding a glass of water out to a man lost in the desert. There are the two tuning knobs. This knob is uh, connects directly to the tuning capacitor and this second knob allows the slow motion tuning and hopefully you can see that's functioning as it should be. When I first got this radio, uh, this knob was uh, inactive. Uh, no matter what it did, it, it always moved like this, making it very difficult to tune a station. And um, I'll show you what I've done to, uh, to get it to function correctly. There's uh, a brass washer and a star-shaped uh, spring. When I measure the depth of this, hope you're getting that, uh, that's three millimeters. So on a flat surface, the top of the spring is three millimeters above uh, the, uh, the flat surface there. The slow motion roller has three gimbals and each gimbal has a tapered brass roller. I'll, uh, I'll show you what that looks like on a close-up photograph. Uh, when I first got this radio uh, there was this uh, uh, two sheets of sandpaper have been glued together back to back and they had been interposed in there as uh, somebody thought they needed to get more friction. When I removed uh, this disc, originally I found that this uh, black roofing felt had been glued onto this uh, top hat that's associated with the chassis. So this was glued uh, like this. I haven't been able to find any uh, technical drawings uh, for this uh, equipment but I have found a description that says there should be a, co a cork ring glued onto uh, this, this part of the uh, dial. I've spent a fair bit of time looking at this uh, mechanism and uh, this is what I've uh, come up with. I haven't got any cork thin enough. It wants to be something uh, like one millimeter or less in thickness. This is a piece of cardboard. It's actually a cornflake packet and it has um, a 20 millimeter hole in the middle and it's uh, 50 millimeters diameter so that's three quarters of an inch two inches that just uh, fits onto that hub there i don't know if you can see that and it happens that uh, when that goes in there when these are done up these two drop screws that cardboard disc won't move. It's important that there is a gap behind this stainless steel disc of approximately one millimeter. That's uh, 40 thou. Make sure that both of the grub screws are tight. 
Make sure that each of the rollers are clean and uh, free from grit. They can have a little bit of oil on them. In fact, I have oiled these and had this plate covered in oil and it doesn't make a lot of difference, but logic says keep the oil off the rollers. That goes on. Uh, the star spring then goes on and uh, there's a small spacing washer that goes on. The little grub screw that goes in there has a tapered nipple on it. I'll, uh, I'll get a, a, a still shot of that. The idea is that the taper goes into the hole in the shaft. Okay, I've put the grub screw back in the uh, knob. When you put the knob on, it's, you should feel that you have to push the knob forward in order to locate the grub screw in the hole. And what you're doing when you're pushing that knob on, you're taking up the tension with the star washer. And there we go, we've got the slow motion action and the direct drive from the, uh, the outer knob. Uh, what I will do is take this apart now and just show you the spacing of that disc from the uh, back of the chassis. I will take a close up photograph but remember we have this uh, metal top hat that's part of the chassis then there's the uh, little cardboard uh, washer and then there is a gap which is uh, uh, illustrated there. This is a piece of cardboard, it's part of the cornflake packet but it's, it's actually about three quarters of a millimetre and then the, uh, uh, the disc. Okay, so I'm not setting out here to carry out a faithful restoration. I've never seen uh, a, a correctly assembled uh, radio um, so I don't know what it should look like but understanding how it should work at least uh, helps me if you understand it from first principles. The thing to understand is that the friction of these rollers onto this disc must be greater than the uh, friction of the cardboard or it uh, um, should be greater than the cork or in my case the cardboard behind the disc. In fact I've put some light machine oil on that cardboard um, because it, it makes sense to reduce the friction. If you press against it then obviously that is acting as a brake. So again, quickly reassembling it, push the knob on, lose the radio. Well, in an ideal world, if we were all equal, they wouldn't necessarily be in the Okay, I uh, hope that's interesting and it uh, helps you. Thanks for watching.
formidable. Bon, mais écoute, je t'embête pas plus longtemps, on aura l'occasion de se retrouver. Mes amitiés, F2DX. Ok, salut Patrick, et merci encore et bon week-end. Ciao. Bye bye. La Kyoza, c'est un gros papa 60 Charlie, et quand Delta Lima, 3 Delta Radio, Fahrenheit. Ok, Delta Radio, mais un carré vieux. 73, Kyoza. Papa, Alpha 9, Charlie, Charlie. Did you hear about Alpha 3, Charlie, Charlie, I'd be here. Negative, the call sign is Papa, Alpha 9, Charlie, Charlie, P.E. Charlie, Charlie, Fahrenheit, Alpha 9, Alpha 73, Q6, Alpha Delta, Alpha Fahrenheit.